Sino po ang mag-aakala na pwede palang patubuin ang sunflower dito sa Pilipinas? And of course, this is a product of years of research and perseverance because sunflower seeds is very important daw and very helpful to our skin. At yan po ang isa sa mga main ingredients sa products ng human nature. It is the beauty line or beauty product of Gawad Kalinga. But you know what? That's not the only product that comes out of this enchanted farm in Bulacan. Marami pa pong ibang mga produkto spearheaded by very talented young kababayans who actually turn their backs on very lucrative corporate careers to work for the poor dito po sa Pilipinas. Kilalanin natin ang ilan sa kanila. Welcome to the Justin Bibe Farm. Is it? Is it? And uh, But Alvi here is going to explain to us exactly what this is about. This right here is uh, part of the Gawad Kalinga Social Enterprise Program called CSI. And what I am, I am here as a social entrepreneur here to help end poverty through social entrepreneurship. The thing is, Alvi, you, you are so young. You look young and you are so young. You're still in college. What are you doing here? That is a long story and uh, I call myself crazy for being here. But it really, I really believe it was divine intervention. I believe someone really brought me here and it was God. And I was just really influenced by Team Tony to be here and to get out of my comfort zone and learn how to run a business. Hence, it's, that's why it's called the Village University. Because we're here to learn what we don't learn in the classroom, but actually apply it and learn through experience. And tell me about how this has changed your life. Yeah, uh, this whole summer we were here every day just uh, worrying about what feeds to buy them. At one point I even bought them hog feeds instead of duck feeds. And I was make it, I'm really here to make all the mistakes that I can to learn. And it's really part of that that uh, theory of Gao Kaling of the way to end poverty is to connect yourself to the ground. You know, if you if you want to achieve success, bring the others with you. So that's what this whole experience is about, is connecting to the ground and to the people from the ground. And this duck farm is here for what purpose? This duck farm is here for to showcase uh, the best in the Philippines, the best salted eggs in the Philippines. And hence, we paint them yellow. We color them yellow to symbolize that story, that it's not your regular salted egg. It's it look de love because it's, it tells a story, the story of success. Billy, you know, we all know that the Philippines were not really a country of entrepreneurs. And um, most people really just go to school wanting to look for a job outside of the Philippines. Why do you think that is? Like, with you, if not for Gawad Kalinga, if, if, if your eyes weren't open, you probably were thinking of that as well or considering that as well. But what, what should we do in order to encourage more people to get into business? Actually, I think uh, from what uh, Tito Tony has been telling us for the past uh, year, uh, it's mainly due to the fact that we we were blinded by the potential of our country. Because uh, right now, I don't think a lot of young people really know what their country is about. Because most of them actually just, uh, even uh, for the Manilenios, I mean, they, they, they love Manila. They, they want to party, they uh, shop, and whatever. And those who live in the provinces actually just want to eventually go to Manila. And that, that's the case. They, 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 they haven't explored the potential of other places being developed and that's what we're trying to do here we are entering schools and actually talking to these students and saying hey uh, there's a lot of things that you can do here we have a lot of problems but let's just look at it as opportunities you have your resources let's do something so it's like business with a heart but what about the challenges what are some of the difficulties um, well for one especially with social enterprises the one of the difficulties that you will encounter especially is pr pr practically entering the community because uh, for a long time, these people have not seen uh, well big shots go down to them and actually succeed in whatever endeavor they go into. So it's a more of a uh, trust issue with them. So uh, what you have to do is to gain their trust and actually genuinely help them. So that's basically it. You, you have to show that you genuinely want to help them and that when you gain their trust, that's when start, things start to really roll. That's what you really want to do. You want to make the community sustainable. That's the idea of social entrepreneurship. Cherry, you also have an, a much more interesting story on how you came to this place. Tell me about that. Actually, I work with GK as a volunteer and a full-time uh, agriculturist for almost four years, since uh, 2007. I met uh, Tito Tony Milato when I was uh, um, when I joined a competition of the 10 Outstanding Students of the Philippines. And then when I was there, after that, I was hired by Ayala Land Company. I work as a landscape horticulturist. But when I did a lot of ha landscaping, high-end landscaping, really hot spots in Manila, I realized that I think 
I'm not really in a direction that I'm not helping the poor. So I joined GK and um, we started the Bayan Anihan. It's the food sufficiency program of Gawad Kalinga because we're not only building homes, we're building really communities. Working for Gawad Kalinga has really given you a wealth of uh, experience. But tell me about the Fulbright Scholarship that you turned your back on. <laughs> Actually, the premise why I applied for Fulbright because uh, I'm so technical. I'm an agriculturist and my focus really is in tissue culture. It's more on the cloning of plants. But when I really worked with Gawad Kalinga, I realized that the problem is more not on the technology. It's really more on the attitude and the moral of the people. That's the time that, oh, I want to go my Fulbright. I was 23 years old, the youngest. And then they said that I'm less experienced. But then the, the Board of Judges chose me as the principal um, uh, recipient of Fulbright. So um, what made you decide? How was your decision making like when you decided to just forgo uh, Fulbright? I chose to live here in the village from 5 o'clock in the morning. You know, the real filth needs of the people. Because some of them really don't have food to eat. Yeah, they have breakfast. But what's after breakfast, lunch? They're thinking over and over what's for it. So I realized that this is the real world. This is the real felt needs of the people. That it's not, it's not the ordinary needs that we have. But it's an extraordinary, very real that there's someone who be there with them to address it. So, and then it was a dilemma right now. It's either to go for my full bride, for self-indulgence, to have feather on my hat. But I think I am needed here in the village. Maybe what I'll be learning in the U.S. is irrelevant, what the people need in the Philippines right now. I can learn, I can learn what I'll be learning there, here, in my own land, in my own people. The, the problem and the solution is here. And then, yeah, it's in the perfect environment. I'm with the perfect people. Uh, who are always comforting and really mentoring me. So maybe this is more than cool, right? And I know it's sayang. I know it's sayang. Many people really like, Cherry, you're crazy. But sometimes you need to be crazy to fall in love with this country and these people genuinely. And that's the essence of it.